Timmy, let's talk about the internet. You know about the internet, Grandpa? Oh, I know a great many things. You know, Timmy, you're getting older and you're curious about things. Right. I've been sniffing your packets. Ugh, that sounds really wrong, Grandpa. Oh, you know what's wrong, Timmy? Space dicks. Oh, I know. How did you know? Because I've been sniffing your packets. Ah, I don't know what that means. I'll Grandpa. tell you. Let's imagine just for a minute that there's someone constantly looking over your shoulder, seeing everything oh. you do on the internet. Oh. Everything? It's already happening. Every image, every website, every song, every download, Timmy. How, how do they know it's me? Well, L Logan knows best. Let's play his internet web tape thing here on techsyndicate.com. Uh, pay attention. Basics. We're also going to tell you uh, some of the ways people can find you on the internet, find out what you're doing on the internet, and we're going to talk about proxy servers. And in future videos, we're going to talk about Tor and several other ways to hide yourself on the internet. All right, let's talk about um, your IP address because that is what identifies you on the internet. And it's kind of like a phone number. Everybody has a phone number that's assigned to them. IP addresses are a little bit different in the fact that IP address is only assigned to a connection and not necessarily an individual. Let's say you're at your house. Everybody in the house um, has an internal IP address that'll hook up to your router. Your router has one IP address that connects to the rest of the world and all the devices inside your house all use that same IP address to interface with the outside world. You go to a website. That website has an IP address and it says, hey, this IP address is requesting some stuff. It could be you, you know, your computer, it could be somebody on a laptop, it could be somebody on an iPad inside the house requesting something from that router. The Website says, all right, let me send the information over. Now, anybody that's listening in the middle of all this nonsense, here or here or in the middle, your ISP, anybody, they can see that IP address and possibly link it back to that router and then say something inside that house was going down. We know that they were talking to this website and maybe this website was a website that they don't like. They can know all that stuff. Is that pretty accurate, Wendell? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the traffic to the, like, they can always see that you're connecting to a certain IP address. Sometimes the traffic is encrypted, sometimes not. If you use HTTPS, the actual traffic is encrypted, but if you're not using HTTPS, they can actually see what you're doing. So the first thing you guys should do, everybody can do this right now. Just go, go grab a plugin for your browser called HTTPS Everywhere. You can get that for Chrome and you can get that for Firefox. And I'm not sure about the other browsers because I don't use the other browsers because they're not as, as secure as the, these two browsers. Now, what that will do is if you go to a website and HTTPS is available, like Google, for example, when you go to Google, it does not default to HTTPS. It just, you know, it's just Google.com. If it's available, it will um, redirect you to the secure version of that website. So that's the first thing that you guys should do. People will still know that you're connecting to Google. It'll be a little bit more difficult to tell, but they won't be able to see what you're doing while you're connected to that um, website. It's only between you and Google. Yep. And you just have to trust that that website's not going to tattletale. Let's talk about how IP addresses are assigned. Now, if you're a business, you're probably going to have a static IP, meaning that you do have an individual phone number that's always on for you. Uh, that's good if you have a server. That's good if you're a business. It's just good for a lot of different things. If you're a user at home and you have a router that goes on and off here and there, a lot of times when your router goes on and off, you're going to get a new IP address. And maybe it's the same IP address that someone down the block was using or something like last month. But it won't be the same IP address forever. Lately, the way things have been going, uh, they've been trying to keep you on the same IP address for a longer period of time in case they get subpoenaed. You know, like AT&T may get a subpoena from the government saying like, hey, who is this IP address connected to? And they can only look right when the subpoena comes in. They can look and say, well, that IP address right now is connected to this person, but we believe it was the same person for like the last month. There's a lot of variation in this. Some ISPs have a really good ability to be like, oh yes, we, we have really good logs. But like AT&T, you know, they've got yeah. a 250 gig cap now and they're like, well, we got a 250 gig cap. But they, can't we can't, even, they can't even monitor that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if they can't monitor your usage, they, they're, they're not monitoring your IP. Right. A lot of the time too with DSL users, DSL users will get a, a different IP a lot more often than cable users. Well, that's how it is, is here in the States. It, it may be different in different countries too. You can go and see what your IP address is by going to ipchicken.com. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And so you can like go there you know, once a week and be like, oh, it's different this week. So, so you know if it's being changed or not. Yeah, so check out IP Chicken if you're curious as to what your IP address is. Let's say that you value your privacy on the internet. You're not a pirate, but you're, you like to be private. And you don't want anybody seeing who you are. You don't want anyone to see uh, what IP address that you're coming from. Well, there's some things that you can do. The first thing we we're going to talk about, proxies, VPNs. What a proxy does is provide an endpoint for you to connect to, and then you can connect from there to somewhere else. Right. So, like, if you want to call Alice, 
but Alice has got your number blocked or you don't want Alice to see your caller ID, you can call Charlie and say, hey, Charlie, um, can you call Alice for me and put me on three-way? That's like what creepy guys used to do, be like, yeah, Jill's got me blocked. I think she doesn't want to go out to the dance with me. I only asked her 16 times, but Charlie, you call her and then hand me the... Well, and you're also trusting that Charlie's not listening in on your call. Yeah, because he could listen in, very well could listen in. And that's the thing, when you guys connect to a proxy service, um, make sure you trust that proxy service. For instance, there's a, there's a lot of services here in the States. One that a lot of people use is Hide My Ass. I'm not sure that I personally trust Hide My Ass. Number one, it's in the States. Number two, there's been some rumors that they may actually retain your data, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of having a proxy, because if there's logs of who did what, when, and where, yeah, if it's like hide my ass, I'm going to go on Reddit or, you know, 4chan or something. Okay, but if it's hide my ass, I'm going to blow the whistle on the thousands of gallons of uh, toxic sludge that Dick Cheney did something with well, then No, that's not Yeah, that'd work. be a terrible, terrible thing to do because you're going to have to really, really trust that proxy. Uh, it's usually better to find a proxy that's not in the United States of America because a lot of times the government, well, I mean, if you're a resident of the United States, can pressure that proxy server to get that information. So that's that's one thing that's bad about proxies. You gotta you gotta understand how it works. Yeah. So you know in what situations it's useful and it can be applied to you. Right. So like if you don't trust your ISP, if you're in a small town and it's a small ISP run by local yokels, yeah. Then maybe it makes sense that you rent a server from you know Linode or Pier One or somebody like that. Viper B, Viper VPN or something. Yeah, and so you trust them more than you trust the local yokels to not spy on you. Now the local yokels they will know that you're connecting to a proxy. Yeah. They will see that your IP address is connecting to a proxy, and they'll be able to tell people, hey, this guy is connecting to a proxy, but they won't be able to see anything beyond that. You connect to the proxy, and that becomes your connection to the rest of the Internet. What happens that's really nice with the proxy is all of your traffic from the, like, all of your traffic is always encrypted between you and the proxy. Yeah, you, when you're at your house, you're speaking English, the proxy turns it into Navajo, and then from there, it's Navajo all the way into the other end. Like, if you were on Google, and you were not using the HTTPS Google, it would be in Navajo as far as your proxy server, and then from your proxy server, it'd be in plain English again. So there, there are going to be some weak points in this. It does make it more difficult, but it's not a perfect solution, and it's not a true way to fully hide yourself on the internet or remain private on the internet. Let's talk about how it differs from VPN servers. A proxy server is is almost always meant for just HTTP traffic. Yeah. A VPN tunnels everything. So VPNs are what you would want to use for applications, torrents. torrents. Uh, um, DNS traffic is also encrypted. And you want to make sure that your DNS server is not like a local or regional ISP. You want to use an anonymous DNS service like Google or OpenDNS. Yeah, which Probably is very OpenDNS. important. Open, D Open DNS is what I would recommend. So just go over to OpenDNS.com. Make sure you uh, use their DNS server because that will help keep you safe. Generally, the VPN services are a better way to go. Yeah. Especially if you can find one offshore. It'll take payment in bitcoins. Now one thing to note with VPNs and proxies, the more anonymous you are, like let's say the server's in China, or let's say you're daisy chaining a VPN to a proxy. So you've got all your connection going to a VPN that's in Germany, and then you're using a proxy out of Hong Kong. Well, you're going to be tunneling through all kinds of stuff, and the more secure you are, the slower your connection's going to be. A lot of the VPNs that you do have to pay for them, and your credit card number is going to be attached to that. Your credit card, your name, your information is all going to be attached to that. So let's say you wanted to be totally private and secure on the Internet and you didn't want anyone to know, you know, who was buying this service. Well, you could go down to the drugstore or Walmart, something like that, and you could get one of these, um, you know, cash cards, like a ca pay cash and get like a Visa cash card or whatever, and you can use that to, you know, get whatever. You can get like a VPN with that. You can get a proxy with that. You could even get uh, one of those wireless cards what are they they're like um, the wireless 3g 4g data cards yeah they're like you they plug into usb and they give you a wireless connection and that'll be almost totally anonymous yeah that runs over the cellular network and if you really 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 want to be secure you shouldn't use your home connection you know let's say you have a really sensitive email to send maybe a love letter to a someone and you really don't want anybody to know that you love this person because it's embarrassing well you're gonna have to go down to like your local coffee shop sit in there use their ip address however there's still going to be cameras in there looking around. So if you're going down there to send a secret muffin recipe, you're going to be fine because no one's going to care. It's going to be so many hoops for them to jump through. They're not going to care. But if you're going down there and you've got a terrible plot, well... There's still a trail. Yeah, and you should get caught. You deserve to get caught, and I hope you do get caught because I don't want any terrible plots going on. 
But they're still going to be trailing. They're still going to be able to look and see the video cameras and say like, hey, at this time of day, someone sent this email. Let's check the video cameras and see who is here typing and see if there's anybody with, uh, you know, doing this. The privacy implications here are making it hard for them to spy on you. And a lot of ISPs are using what's called deep packet inspection mm -hmm. tools like Sandvine yep. to analyze and monitor your traffic. Hell, uh, some ISPs got in trouble for changing the banner ads on website to their banner ads. One thing you can do is say if you're going to a coffee shop or something, you don't want to go inside... You can just walk over to a friend's house who's near a coffee shop and jump on the Wi-Fi. That's always an option. Or you can, like, hang out somewhere near a library as long as the signal's strong enough. Hop on that way. That might work. So that's that's an idea. But I don't think anybody's going to be doing anything that heinous. And you really shouldn't be doing anything that heinous. But that's just, you know, off the top of my head, ideas on how you guys can be totally secure. This is about privacy. And this is about giving you the tools that, you know... If you know somebody's doing something they shouldn't do and you don't have a normal channel for blowing the whistle, you ought to know how to blow the whistle safely because no good deed goes unpunished. That's also very, very true. And we're probably going to get in trouble for telling people how to blow the whistle. Ben Franklin said, you know, those that, that give up essential liberty for temporary safety deserve neither. And so that really applies here because the people that are manipulating the internet are taking away fundamental basic things that ought to be built into the system that have a good, useful purpose for free and open societies. Now, a lot of you guys think that your emails are encrypted because you, you log on to Gmail or whatever, and it's HTTPS, and you, you think that everything's going to be secure. And you know what? While you're sitting there typing on Gmail and you're in your browser, it's HTTPS. That's that's okay. But as soon as you click send, it's not encrypted. It does. They, there's no encryption going on. It, it, it sends it in plain English. So anybody sniffing the track it, traffic in between point A and point B can see everything in your email. So if you want to... Um, have secure email, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need uh, to run some encryption like PGP or X509. You guys can Google those things. There is a plugin uh, that will allow you to send Gmail using X509. Uh, and uh, there are plugins for um, Outlook that will allow you to send encrypted emails. But you have to do the encryption yourself. It's not something that is built into the browser. And do not feel safe when you're sending things through email. They can read everything unless it's encrypted. And then it's very difficult. The last couple things that we're going to talk about in this video, um, we're going to show you guys how easy it is to sniff your packets and how easy it is to sniff your cookies. I know the old dude in that video before was talking about sniffing packets. So let's talk a little bit about what that is and show you exactly how easy it is to compromise Wi-Fi and also see everything you're doing on your local network. Cookies retain information like your passwords. If you go to a website and you're logged in and you're authenticated, it'll retain that information. Um, if you have preferences, like you have a website you like to go to and you always change the background to black, the next time you go, that it'll, it'll remember you based on your cookies. You can clear your cookies. And a lot of people think, oh, as long as I clear my cookies, I'm good. It clears the cookies that you see. There's still a lot of stuff going on in the background. Ever heard of EverCookie? That's something to look up. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not really Evercookie specifically, but it's Evercookie style techniques. Speaking of cookies, let's talk about uh, FireSheep. Now, FireSheep is an interesting plugin for Firefox. FireSheep allows you to like when you're on the when you're on the Wi-Fi hotspot down at the coffee shop. Yeah, you can spy on all the unencrypted traffic that's going on in the coffee shop. And uh, Fire Sheep lets you assume the identity of anybody it sees in the coffee You're shop. You're essentially hijacking yeah. their cookie session. Yeah. You're stealing, like when you log in, it gives you a cookie that's like, oh, here's your ticket. And, you know, this is your, this is your golden ticket. And anybody at the ISP level or any network in between you and where you want to go has the same access. So the only way to get around that is make sure you're using HTTPS. In Facebook, make sure you go and change your you know, security settings to always use HTTPS. Don't use websites when you're at a coffee shop unless they're on HTTPS. And install that HTTPS everywhere you know, piece of software that I told you about. For the love of God, install it on your machine. Install it on your laptops. Install it on all your browsers. So how does FireSheep uh, know what you're doing? Well, Wendell, go ahead. Well, okay. So FireSheep does what's called packet sniffing. With a wireless network, you can usually see what all's going on on the wireless network around you for other wireless clients. So as FireSheep is running, it's just gathering everything. But it's built to look for specific uh, tokens or specific sessions uh, for certain websites, and then it presents it to you in a cool, handy, GUI format. But you can actually use another tool for packet capture, like Wireshark, uh, IP dump depending on what uh, or TCP dump depending on what platform you're on and this will dump everything it sees and when you dump everything it sees you can actually you know look at exactly what somebody's doing and step page by page if somebody's running instant messenger and the instant messenger is not using encryption you can see the instant messages going back and forth everything yep 
if they're on a website that doesn't have security and they type a password yeah you, you can see, see the password you can see what they're looking at you can see what urls they're going to you can see what they've typed in and submitted through their web browser it's really kind of scary and most of the internet is not encrypted now talking about secure wi-fi wi-fi is becoming incredibly easy to crack and there's a few different ways around this um, or there's a few different things you can do to help secure yourself but if you got wpa wep wpa2 it can be cracked pretty easily. In fact, there are services online that you pay a small fee and they'll, they'll crack it for you. Now, one thing that's kind of risen up to go against this is uh, the open wireless movement. And you could just go to openwireless.org and get some information about that. And we did talk about that in one of the last episodes of the tech. Now, one thing that's interesting about the open wireless movement is to combat all of this nonsense, they're trying to get everyone to open up their router, create a separate guest network, or just open it up so that everyone around them can freely use uh, the wireless. Now, this is going to be either really, really good or really, really bad. It's bad for the individual, but it's good for society. Right. And the reason it's bad for the individual is that if, you know, Bob is using your connection, your wireless connection that you're opening up to him, and he does something terrible, and he downloads, you know, something he shouldn't be downloading, you could get in trouble for it. However, if it's open, and you go into court and say, like, listen, my, my wireless is open, 50 people use my wireless, it may be very, very difficult for a court, especially if there's a jury involved, to nail something on you. They can be like, well, we don't really know if it was him or not. My perception of how this has been in courts is when people, even when they have a password protected wireless, um, it's like they have a harder time that proving their innocence. It's like, well, you know, you had a password on it, nobody had the password, therefore he couldn't get in. Well, that's not the reality. Yeah, the reality is you can get, you can break into it in three minutes. Yeah, so it's almost like, you know, it's like, well, I locked my car and it was stolen and somebody got run over. Okay, we're going to bring you up on manslaughter charges. So wait, wait, wait. I didn't lock my car. Oh, well, you know, it could have been anybody. That's, right. that's, Someone that's else absurd. could have taken the car and... Completely absurd. But that's how, it, that's how it is right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have learned something more importantly. I hope you guys uh, are, you know, sort of thinking about ways to stay secure. But the best way to stay secure is just don't do anything stupid. If you want to consume content, don't download a torrent. Go find some cool indie content. We've been talking about that a lot lately, but there's a lot of good content out there. We don't have to steal content. That's just not something that we condone at all around here. And uh, you know what? If you're someone who has a terrible, uh, heinous plot, well, you deserve to get caught. So that's my stance on it. And uh, we just want, we're just for privacy, not piracy. And that's all this is about. Stay tuned for the Trouble with Tor and some more videos in the future. We'll get a little bit more in depth. Let us know what parts of this that you want us to really get into because we, you know, we kind of, gave you guys an overview of everything but what parts of this would you like to really get you know nerdy about and we'll help we'll do that you know for you guys so um till next time questions inbox at techsyndicate.com put them in the comments prefer the comments on tech syndicate because i look at those more than the ones on youtube but that's about it and we'll see you guys very soon stay safe on the internet always uh, practice safe surfing That's a big part of it. Hey, I caught it. <laughs> it's getting good a, at this ninja catching thing. It's not a gnat this time. It's a CIA surveillance <laughs> drone. That's gnat funny. <laughs>